What's going on guys? Zuko back with another Shadowlands video. How's everybody doing? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hope you've got a coffee. I'm still wearing my scarf because it's still cold in Canada, so. I'm still going to be wearing it in the summer, let's be real. <laughs> Hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Listen, we're going to review um, one of the new dungeons for this patch. So um, I just did the Tazavesh dungeon, one of them. The one that I did is the uh, Solis Gambit. Here it is. Here, Tazavesh Solis Gambit. So I only did a, I only did a four. We got to get that higher. But I was actually really terrified of these dungeons because I thought that they um, were really, really hard, and they were hard when Patch Nine Point Two like initially dropped. But they've made them much, much easier now. <clears throat> and Solis Gambit in particular, if you guys have not done this dungeon yet, it's like much easier. It's only the last three bosses. For some reason in the Dungeon Journal, Tazavesh is not split into two. It should be split into two now, right? But anyway, so the first dungeon, which would be Streets of Wonder, is going to have Zofex, the Grand Menagerie, Mailer Mayhem, Mises Oasis, and so Sozami. Whereas this one that I just did, Soli's Gambit, only has Hillebrand, Time Cap, Hooktail, and Soli. So this dungeon is very easy to accomplish, like... The timer on it was actually pretty good. We literally had like 10 or 11 deaths and the tank left. And we still actually timed this dungeon. <laughs> so I'm going to show you the VOD in a second. But just so you know, I think that if you guys have not done this one yet, Soli's Gambit, you should run in and do it. Because it's like super, super easy to get this dungeon done. So what build did I run um, for this dungeon? We ran kind of a wacky combo of builds that I'm trying to sling these builds together and make them work. And I think that there's something here, but this is a Lashing Flames Hot Hand Hailstorm build with um, Witch Doctor Wolf Bones. So for example, we we did not run Primal Lab Actuators, which is sort of the obvious choice with some of these fire things. And then you would also think to take Fire Nova, but I wanted to try the Hailstorm build um, with Witch Doctor Wolf Bones while running the fro uh, Chill to the Core Conduit. So similar to like what I was kind of running in my raid setups, but with a bit of a uh, a bigger AOE component with Lashing Flames and Hailstorm. So um, Lashing Flames is sort of the big the big difference there. So it actually turned out to be really good. The dun the um, the playstyle is is interesting. It's like if you get a hot hand proc, then you're tab targeting through enemies to get the lashing flames debuff, and you can see in our damage overall that flame shock was at number one. So that's that's kind of what you're doing, right? So your flame shock damage is going to get boosted by lashing flames, but you have to be tab targeting through enemies as soon as you get a hot hand proc. You have to be pressing that. Sorry, there's something in my eyeball. Oh my gosh, get that out of there. Okay, so that's like that first part. Um, and then the second piece is obviously that you're pressing Frost Shock. Now, you don't have the Ice Strike reset on Frost Shock, so it's not like the Frost Shock, Ice Strike, Frost Shock thing. But um, you are going to Frost Shock with every single spender, right? So you do Chain Lightning into a Frost Shock because you're getting the Hailstorm buff. All that stuff is working together with your Legendary to reduce the cooldown of your Feral Spirits and have them up all the time. I'm not even sure if I cast them properly, but you can see they were up for 40% of that entire dungeon. Remember, in Mythic Plus... Uptime in Fairy Wolves is going to be lower because you have you have natural downtime where you're running. And we died a couple times, so I was there's parts of this dungeon where we're just running back to our bodies. So anyway, 40% uptime on Feral Spirits is actually pretty good. So um, yeah, the dungeon is very, very easy. These bosses are actually not hard, and they have done significant nerfs on nerfs on nerfs to both the Streets uh, version and then this last Soli's Gambit version as well. So... Um, you shouldn't be afraid of these dungeons anymore. You should run in and get them. And I'm going to do a higher version of, of one uh, later today, I think. I just was a little bit worried if, that it was going to absolutely wreck us. So, But let's get into the dungeon. I'll show you the affixes for this week are uh, Storming, Bursting, Fortified. Now, we only had Fortified and Bursting because it was only a plus four. So we didn't actually have Storming, and we did not have Encrypted. So that would definitely add a layer of difficulty to the dungeon. But let's check over in the video review. Oh, we're doing Inception. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So... Um, we're going into the dungeon here in a second. Let me just uh, skip ahead. So the first section, of my course, scarf. I didn't have my scarf. Uh, <laughs> yes, you do. It's on the dresser. <laughs> Zoe had my I'm scarf. She was just refusing to give it to me. So you actually start in the um, 
right near the Murlocs. So, you, you know, as you would expect, this is the second half where it starts. So, like, literally the bulk of your trash, like, probably 60 or 70% of your trash comes from here, comes from these Murlocs. So, you can just do the normal route through here. If you guys have done this dungeon before, you can just do the very normal route where you you run to the side. Uh -huh. Lots and lots of AoE opportunities here, obviously. And the big thing that you need to be kicking in the next pack of Murlocs That's is, of course... Start. The invigorating fish sticks, which actually just happened right here. You can see that this fish stick thing right here, invigorating fish sticks, it's a totem that the murlocs put down. And um, it will heal everybody to, like, full. So you really need, you can't let that go off. Can I go back? I don't want to go back to the second. Okay. I will show you. I forget who cast it. You'll see it in a second here. There it is. It's this guy right here. I don't know what his name is. I had him targeted. But I can't see that because it's in the video. Anyway, I forget which one it is. Looks like the scale binder. Those are the ones. So you need when you get to these packs of Murlocs, you need to focus down the scale binder because he'll drop this invigorating fish stick down and it will heal everybody. So if he gets the cast off, you must kill that totem right away. That's the bottom line. So yeah, and then this uh, this big um, tide dude, he needs to die as well. This big Goliath. Can I have my scarf back? <clears throat> I still didn't have my scarf. He uh, he does title stomp. Every single time he does title stomp, it'll do more damage than the last one. So watch this. See, we all take a bit of damage there. We have two stacks now building up in the top here. You can see this debuff right here. So if you don't kill him, eventually that title stomp will just one-shot you. On, like, higher Mythic Plus difficulties, this is going to matter a lot more. Obviously, everything was just dying um, in this one because it was such a low key. But if you're doing, like, a plus 10 or, or above, then you're going to need uh, to focus down these targets both. The scale binders that do invigorating fish sticks and the Goliaths that do a stomp. So we, I thought we were going to skip this pack and then I think he ends up pulling both. This paladin was an interesting chap, let me tell you. So again, we've got a scale bind. Oh, that's a shell crusher. There's a scale binder in here, I think. There's a wave crasher there. There's at least one scale binder in here. It's hard to see them all. I need to change the way my bars are arranged, but... Attack the totem. See, the totem's over here. We're not killing it, so they're all getting healed. It makes this fight, like, impossible. So, really good opportunity to use uh, crowd control. Anything. Like, any kind of AoE stun. Yeah. Um, Windwalker Monk, uh, obviously, nice. with leg sweeps, really good. But also the bounce. You can bounce them away so that they're not casting it anymore. Any kind of CC here is really, really strong. And um, that's, the, that's the first chunk of the dungeon. You're just going to kill... Sticks. Um, Murlocs over and over again. Push forward. There's one more pack here before you get to the door, and there's one more Goliath. He'll do his stomp thing, of course. Then the last pack I here. Hot hand the entire dungeon. Yeah, you you can That's see funny. that there are two guards standing at the door. They have there's like these electricity boys. This last part is kind of dangerous. You could end up pulling like way more than you want to, and if it was like a bolstering week, like you would be totally screwed here. So you need to be really careful with these mechanics. Um, he ends up going and pulling. See, the Murlocs will run away, right? All Murlocs do this. So you need, like, a uh, binding shot from Hunter would be really good in this section of the dungeon. Um, obviously, Slow Totem, that we've got Earthbind Totem, and our Cap Totem is really good. But you need other classes to um, Ring of Peace to bounce them back in. All Murlocs will run away. It's really annoying. So you have to make sure that they're not running into other packs of Murlocs or you'll pull them. So the tank pulls the lightning guys here. These are these two guys. They do Crackle, which is just a lightning thing on the ground. And then they do this Crack, just Charged Pulse, which is an AoE thing. One thing I really want to highlight with the build that I'm running here is that because it's focused on Frost Shock so much, you can really pull off these cool combos away from melee. So I'm backing up and I'm casting like Lightning Bolt and then Frost Shock and then Lightning Bolt again. And by the time I'm done doing my little combo, their big AoEs are done. So Lightning Bolt, Frost Shock, Lightning Bolt. And look, I'm running back in. The, char the, the cast is done. I can get back to my melee stuff. So it's so cool that you can... Um, the versatility of the Frost Shock focused builds cannot be understated there's so much like versatility here's another charge pulse so i'm going to run out with lightning bolt into frost shock into lightning bolt i have to back up again there's another lightning bolt into another frost shock i cast the wolves i think and then i get back in there i forget to cast the wolves because i'm bad i was focused on this stupid murloc but you can see what i'm trying to say there that if you have to obey a mechanic which you do there's another charge pulse lightning bolt chain lightning frost shock i did two chain landings in a row because that's all i could really cast frost shock another chain landing on the way back in and there you go. Our damage stays pretty pretty competitive there. So 
it's really cool, and the versatility uh, is really good. So you'll fight two more of these lightning guys, and then we're going to get to the first boss. So the two lightning guys end up dying, and then we're going to get to the first boss. So if you guys haven't done this dungeon, this, this here, here's how it's set up. The boss will spawn in the middle. There's like four symbols where um, these little colored symbols are going to spawn. So there'll be like an orange and a yellow and a purple and a blue. You can see in the corner of the room here, see this little console over here? There's four of those in the room that correspond to the four um, uh, symbols that have their colors. This console at the top can be touched by anybody. Usually it's the tank that does it, but it doesn't really matter who does it. And then the symbols will appear for only that person who touches the console. So only the person who runs up and touches this console, then the symbols will appear. And then you need to tell your team where the symbols go. So it'll show like orange in the top left, yellow in the top right, purple in the bottom left, and then blue in the bottom right. So you need to take the orange symbol over here because that's the top left. And then you need to take the yellow symbol over here because that's the top right, etc., etc. So that's the entire fight is sort of this, this symbol thing. I thought they had changed it so that anybody could see the console once it had been touched, but that's not true. Only the person who touches the console can actually see the symbols and where they need to go. So communication is key. You need to come up with like a system. If you're pugging this, you have to come up with like a typing system so you can tell everybody what's going on. Now, we end up actually wiping this because I forgot to tell everybody, uh, which was this is totally my fault. Uh, and you'll see it in a second. So you fight the guy. He's going to spawn a couple ads. You should lust this fight because you'll get to lust the final fight as well. There's only three bosses. They changed this dungeon, but I'm not sure. I thought they changed this boss, but they, they didn't. The only thing that they did on this boss is they made the console stay open earlier. And when the console's running, the boss puts a yellow puddle in the ground on the, in the middle of the arena that slowly expands. So here's one mechanic. Um, usually cast on a ranged person. This little uh, uh, yellow thing will chase them around. And then he'll spawn ads. These ads need to be killed right away. And then they need to be kicked. You see the one on the left here? So they're empowering him right now. You have to stun them, which I just did. Then this guy does a uh, Valorous Bolt. You need to kick that as well because that does a buttload of damage. So you kick that. Then he does the main mechanic, which is the Sanitizing Cycle. And he's going to get the symbols. I click the console here. And then it shows me the symbols. Orange, blue, yellow, purple. It'll be random every time. So then I need to be telling everybody. I thought they could see the symbols here, but they couldn't. So they didn't know where to go. So this is my fault. I, I'm being a totally, I totally forgot. So I needed to type, I needed to type it to them. So you can see the, um, the, the uh, golden thing will expand and it will eventually uh, consume the entire arena if you don't do it quick enough. So I totally screwed that up. That's my fault. We end up dying. We fight him again. And you'll see how to do it properly top this left, time. Top right. So the priest gave me like top an left, order right. that he wanted me to do. Bottom left, bottom right. That seems really bad, but. And uh, we have to kill the adds again. Make sure you stun them because they're doing empowered defense. They're empowering the boss. And then kick the one over here. There he is. Valorous Bolt. Kill it. Then we're going to kill him. And then he's going to do the, the symbol again. And I'm going to type it out. Top left, top right. Orange is top left, yellow is top right, and then I did blue and then purple. So now they know where to go because we've decided on an order in which I'm going to call them out. You have to do do this with your group, whatever you want to do. So then the symbols are gone. I have to remember them. I'm typing them out again, but my teams did a good job, and they went and put all the symbols in already. Da, 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 da. I was trying to tip them out like a second time. There we got him. You can see he's getting attacked with all the... With all the different symbols, and then we can kill them. So they did a great job there. And then he'll just repeat phase one. He spawns adds. He sends out the purifying blast on a ranged person usually. And they have to run around. And that's it. That's that fight. So not actually too bad at all. Pretty easy. But just have to communicate with your team. Then you're going to go through a portal here. And you're going to move into the pirate zone. We're going back to Boralus, baby. I actually love this section of the dungeon so much. You literally are going back to Boralus Harbor from BFA. This is right near where I used to, you know, camp out as an alliance person. So you're going to kill some pirates, then you're going to get to the pirate boss. Bunch of pirates here. They do stuff like Haymaker and Super 
Super Saiyan. They they have the best abilities. It's such a fun dungeon, guys. If you haven't done this dungeon, you gotta run in here. It's just like it's just so much fun. So you can see our damage is pretty good, right? Almost 15k sustained. Lots of frost shock. I didn't even get a hot hand proc till the end here. So hot hand really makes the damage go crazy. So <clears throat> this trash up here is really important just to talk about. The tank here is gonna leave in a few seconds because he doesn't understand what's going on. But this trash, do this not pull the boss. Fight. Don't pull this boss right away. You have to kill the trash that's all around him. And there's a mixture of trash. There's one particular enemy called an officer. And you can see him in the back here. So there's a deckhand and a tide sage. The tide sages need to be kicked. The officer needs to be killed. Like right away. He'll do he'll throw this like dagger on the ground that spins around and it does like an absolutely colossal amount of damage. So you need to kill the officers in these packs. But the tank mm -hmm. thinks you should just I don't know what he was thinking here. It was just he's brain dead. No. So me and the priest are we're like, dead. uh, dead. yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna die here. We're so dead. Don't do this. He this has is never been here before. yeah. The pally, pally dies right away, and then I want you to look at the pally's uh, raid frames here. So he's currently dead. Okay. But um, very soon that will change. <laughs> oh my God, so we have you have to run back, back as well, which is not good. You have to run all the way back. So it's just dying is pretty bad. So I guess he respawns here and then he he goes offline here in a second. He's following us. He must just leave the game. I, I I'm yeah, this trash is like really hard. Yeah, that trash is really difficult. You need to actually focus on it and get it down properly, or else it, it's just going to be a nightmare for you. Oh, well. So I guess he follows us here a little bit, and then when does he go offline? It's got to be in a second here. I guess we don't deaths. notice it until we get all the back. Oh, maybe it's on. He dies on the next pull. I'm sorry, guys. It's on the next pull. So here we go. We do start pulling trash. It's all good. Nobody's mad. Like, we weren't mad about this, but we're pulling, we're pulling, and we start killing this trash again. You have to kill the officer. The They do Super Saiyan, which is fine. But you'll see the um, the Pally dies here. Sw sword Toss. This is what the officers do. They do Sword Toss. That does so much damage. So you need to watch out for that. And you have to get away from it as well. Pally dies. I summon Rocky just to, to make the situation salvageable because we can kill. Rocky dies right away. Then, when I, then I have to start kiting because I'm getting wrecked. That's Sword Toss, I think. Or no, that's the Tide, tide Sage thing. Anyway, I'm, I'm kiting an officer here because see, they do a lot of damage. And then the Paladin is offline, of course. He leaves because he's, he's a, he's a four-year-old. I don't know what he is. He's an idiot. He doesn't need to leave. We're going to be perfectly fine. I don't understand people who just who leave like this. It drives me crazy. So anyway, we kill the trash and the okay. DH. I say to the DH, we should um, let's summon you back. You go tank and we'll summon you back because we had a warlock, which was perfect. And he does that like a true champ. And we clean up the rest of the trash and it's fine. And then we get to the boss fight. So this boss fight, this is uh, this is such a fun boss fight. It's just a big dragon with a pirate hat. And um. Of course, there are typical sort of dragon moves. There's a big breath move that goes on the tank, and you're supposed to aim it at the incoming soldiers. There's a bunch of pirates that are jumping off of a ship to our left that you can't see. And so the tank, there's the pirate ship right there. They're going to jump onto shore here, and the tank needs to aim the breath at the pirates because it knocks them back into the water, and then they die. Where You, you cannot stand behind this boss because she has a hook tail, and I'm going to get grabbed by it in a second here. Watch this. I'm standing behind her, which is not good. Hook swipe. I got hooked up right there just by hook swipe. So hook swipe just is an ability that targets behind her because she has the hook for it to use. You have to stand on her side. There was the breath you just saw against the tank. And then there's um the cannons from the pirate ship also fire down on you, and they leave fire on the gun. There's the breath right there. You can see there's a pirate gang going away, Captain. So there's a, there's a pirate right there. He's going to get blasted and killed by the breath. Oh, I think he hadn't quite spawned yet. That was unlucky. But you can see here's the ads. The tank has the right idea. He'll get it in a second. He's going to hit them with the breath right here. And boom. It knocks them right over and kills them. I actually thought it launched them in the water, but it just kills them. So so that's good. That's how you use the breath if you're the tank on this fight. Otherwise, 
you just try to find whatever room you can. Don't go near the tail. And you, you just burst. This room does get very full of cannon shots. So that's kind of annoying. And then she gets double time. She goes really, really quick. But uh, and then you get you also get hooked by the pirate ship. You just have to run away from it. If you have your spirit walk up, that's a great time to use it, of course. And obviously the fight doesn't last very long because we are uh, only on a plus four. Then you're going to go through another portal right here. And it takes you to the final area, the opulent nexus. There's a bunch of trash to kill here, and then we'll just get to the final boss. Here we go. Okay. Oh, last trash. So this final boss used to be, like, way harder. I, I did this dungeon on hard mode, actually, back when it was just a flat Mythic Zero when it first came out and we didn't have any gear, basically. That's how you get, like, the, there's a mount you can get in here for that. Anyway, it's, like, a lot easier now. The Mythic Plus version, they have toned down, like, a lot. So this boss fight is actually quite simple now. Not simple, but it, it doesn't hurt as much, which is great. So she's going to... Just uh, you start attacking right away, and um, I think you can lust on pull if you want to, but it depends on the week. She's gonna spawn some ads. So here comes the assassins. You can, can you can crowd control them, and in about five seconds they're gonna jump away and start doing this like shuriken toss thing. So you want to try and cc them before that. See, he jumps away, shuriken blitz. You have to kick shuriken blitz or stun these guys. If you let shuriken blitz go off, you're gonna die. This is another main mechanic of the fight here. This little orb has five like uh five health let's say you need to hit this thing five times and you should have different players actually do it because um otherwise it just won't work very well like you get a dot every time you press it so i see that it's up and i'm like oh shoot and you have a limited amount of time so i hit it and it puts a little dot on us and then i hit it again and now we have two stacks see how there's two stacks on me i need to let this fall off you need to let that dot fall off before you go and hit it again but it's only a plus four so it didn't matter but see how the dot is uh, stacked up to four times now so that was a mistake on our part so you get her to a certain health like 50 percent health and she transforms into her like omega form and then she starts doing all these like star related things so hyperlate jolt hyperlate jolt you need to send this through a star there's five stars out we only had four people, so this was kind of difficult to do. That's why you need all five people alive. But there's five stars. The arrow that you can see here, that's the beam of light that's going to come through me. It needs to pass through the star. That's important. So there, it hit. we hit three out of the five. Three out of the five got hit there. There's still two that didn't get hit there. So then I, I'm trying to type to the guy. I should have just moved. I was an idiot here. There. Now, the priest and the uh, warlock figured it out, and they did a fantastic job which is really good. The DH didn't quite know what was going on, but that's okay. We're still doing okay. Keep beating up the boss. Then he's she's going to detonate these stars, and it just sends out a bunch of uh, little missiles here. Just dodge them. I'm, I got hit by a couple here. Lots of, like, mechanics on this fight. So she's rearranging the stars again. There's the collapsing star. We need to soak this. Again, you need to space this. So there's, there's a dot on us right now. I'm not going to hit it. Now you can go hit it. Then you only get one stack of the dot again. But we just hit it back to back because it doesn't do as much damage as it used to. But on higher Mythic Plus, you have to do that properly or else you're going to die. Okay, and then she's going to do the arrow ability, the energy... Oh, no, she's uh, detonating them. She's just detonating them. I get hit by, like, two of them here, I think. Such a, such a disaster, man. Here we go. Now she does the arrow thing, so we need to pass through the arrow. So you can see, I have an, this DH, he needs to be on the other side of that star in order for the arrow to pass through it. So he's going to miss here. Oh, he gets it just in time. See, he ran at the last second there. So he got it. We got all of them except for one. And I think I almost get this one. No, I missed it. So we have to wait one more time. So again, you need to do this like if you if you let this go off multiple times in higher mythic plus, you'll just die. So you have to kind of you have to kind of one shot that mechanic, and then we keep beating her up, and that's about it. That's the fight. That's it. So we actually got through it, even though the tank left, um, and uh, didn't get any loot. The damage was okay. It could have been a lot better, but that last if if people don't understand how that last fight goes, then you kind of have to explain the whole mechanic, and that gets really difficult. So. Um, they did really great there. Really, really great. So let's switch back to the gameplay here. So we ended up doing, 
um about 7.8k overall again could have done a lot better just didn't uh i was focused on like a lot of the mechanics and stuff and that there's a lot of mechanics there but you can see flame shock is way up there because of lashing flames and then frost shock is up there because of hailstorm that's our aoe right there it's kind of weird right to look at it that way but that is like a huge chunk of our aoe um components but you can see we have a very mastery focused build all of our mastery benefiting abilities are way at the top here flame shock frost shock lightning those are all nature damage right chain lightning nature damage and then the spirit wolves um had lots of spirit wolves up as well so really like this build i need to tweak it a little bit more to make it even better but i think that this actually works fairly well in mythic plus it's a good um it's another build you can run besides something like primal lava actuators where you're just doing like a full-on fire build it actually works quite well and the maelstrom generation is is pretty crazy so that's it guys that is the um dungeon tazavesh Soli's gambit it's very easy there's only three bosses it's got to be the easiest dungeon it's like easier than mists like it takes less time to do than mists so they've really nerfed these tazavesh dungeons they made them quite easy to accomplish i think the streets of wonder will be much harder but I think that both of them are going to be easy to do. So get in there and do some dungeons and try out some funky new builds. If you guys want to try out this Witch Doctor Wolfbones build, give it a shot. It works. It takes a bit of brain power to like get it online, but it works and it's a lot of fun. So thanks so much for watching. If you guys haven't subscribed yet to the channel, I would really appreciate it. We are like so freaking close. I think we're at 970 now. Um, let me look really quick here. I think we're, we're like almost close to a thousand. I'm trying to get up to a thousand subs. We're at 968. So yeah, if you can drop a subscribe down below this video, I'd really appreciate it and drop a like and give me some comments. What you think about the build? What you think about the new dungeons? Let's start a conversation down there until the next one. See you later.